Yes, so, so next talk is, uh, is Ian Turr on a multi-level uh, cognitive architecture for self-referencing, self-awareness, and self-interpretation. So please, Ian. Okay, thank you. This is uh, some work I did together with my colleague, Gerrit Glas. You see his affiliations, but what you don't see in the affiliations is that he is a very experienced uh, psychiatrist <coughs> with also uh, active in education of uh, psychiatrists and training of them. So it was a new uh, experience and he has some uh, um, literature, some papers and, and book about certain ideas and you see the ideas in the title. Really those are his notions and the challenge that we addressed here is how to model that in a computational manner to make it illustrative in a, in a way that you can simulate things. <coughs> so the idea is that during a therapy, often uh, one of the things to achieve is that the client gets more knowledge and awareness of her or himself than that he uh, is in that sense uh, more equipped to handle himself or herself. Uh, for, for example, getting familiar with one's own characteristics, being aware of important aspects, <coughs> being able to interpret your own behavior in relation to those aspects, <coughs> and based on such insights, being able to manage oneself more effectively. <coughs> so, three important notions, and those are just coming from this literature, Self-referentiality, that in the sense that behaviors by themselves say or signify or indicate something about the person having them. Self-awareness, <clears throat> that you can become aware of an aspect of oneself or of oneself as a whole. And self-interpretation, that's the way how people understand, uh, perceive or value themselves and come to certain steps maybe. So the overall view of the multi-level architecture we have uh, designed for this looks like this. There is the base level of, of mental processes. I will give an example uh, in a minute. Uh, then there is a level where you can refer to yourself in, the, in how you function on that base level. There is a level where you are aware of this referring to yourself, and there is a level of this self-interpretation. So these are <coughs> the four levels in the architecture that I will discuss. So how are they, these levels exactly defined? Um, so um, at least we need some form of adaptation because these levels, they influence each other. You have all that they uh, can use information from each other, but also they can have downward connections that they modify certain things. And for that I just uh, refer to Sandra and Barkay who described how you can have different uh, uh, types of uh, learning. <coughs> so there is often a lot of emphasis on synaptic learning, but there are also other learning mechanisms uh, like intrinsic properties of the neurons themselves. And that's also a part that we will use in this architecture. And one example of the synaptic learning is, of course, the well-known Hebbian learning. <coughs> and we use also something of that in the architecture. But there is also another one, and that's also referred to by this Chandra and Barkay paper, is excitability adaptation, so that you can make the excitability of a neuron better or worse, or stronger or weaker. So that's uh, also something that we can, will include in the architecture. So what is the uh, general architectural view that has been used? <coughs> that's the idea of network reification or in other words that you obtain a network that in, the, in some sense has a self-model for part of its structure. Note that a, net a network has structure and it has nodes, or our states as we call them. And the structure is the, the kind of framework, um, and within that, fr that framework the nodes operate with each other, they influence each other through the links. But the structure itself 
it's not directly accessible normally in a network, but if you add the structure itself, if you add the self model for that, then you get it in the form of states. So then you have states that represent, in a sense, the characteristics of the network, and then you can operate on them, and you can read them, you can do anything with them. So, for example, you can add self-model states W for representing the weight of a connection from some state X or to a state Y at the base level. So, usually you have such a connection that is indicated like omega, and then the omega is represented by a state W. And you can also have a self-model state T for a certain uh, base state that represents the excitability threshold of that state. So those are just additions to the network, and you include them in the network also by adding links to them, connections to them, and also connections from them, so that they really operate within one network as a total. That's what we also sometimes call a self-modeling network. So let me uh, show some examples. This is just a very simple example to get the ID. Um, so Suppose you have a small network at the base level, which is a number of connections. Then for each of the connections, for example, you add, you don't need to do it for each, but in this example I do it for uh, all of them, I think. Then you add a state on this first uh, level, first verification level. For example, this represents the connection weight from this link and, and so on. So then all these states there in this self-model, this first verification level, you can also just so call it self-model. This self-model states, they all represent in certain ways the network structure elements here, and in this case only the connection weights. So let's consider the case study then, that's uh, the real example that we are looking at. I will show the base level first. There is a situation where we have uh, a client uh, who is uh, uh, experiencing certain complaints, and uh, but he has a problem to accept that there may be mental problems. So he prefers to directly uh, suggest to go to a general practitioner like a physical, a physical problem. And because he has uh, a belief that um, if you accept that you have a mental problem, you will have a stigma, and people will maybe will find you weak or whatever. And that has to do with some memories in the past, that in the past he found that that kind of things happened to some persons he not really knew. It's also another belief that, uh, well, if it's a mental issue, it's irrelevant because mental issues usually just go away by themselves. So that's also based on a memory in the past. So those beliefs are easy to derive, to, to generate a desire to avoid, to confirm that there is a mental problem and, uh, and to prepare to do this avoidance action. So therefore he, he doesn't only want to go to the physical uh, doctor, but, but also a uh, does not want to go to any mental health option. So that's the, the general idea, and here there are some explanations of, the, of certain connections. Um, so that these memories on stigma, they are um, uh, an important issue. These complaints are an important step, and in, in in we will make a, uh, also a simulation of it later. And then the belief in stigma is, will also play a main role. And this, then we have these avoidance things. There are there is a, uh, there are interventions in this level. There is one in intervention of a partner who tries to suppress this avoidance reaction a bit. She tries to get uh, him accepting to go to a mental health option. So now the next level. That's uh, the f first verification level, the self-referencing level. That's the, we have different things on it. This is the real connections that the patient doesn't know of. The real connections, they do heavy on learning and they make it work. So the, the, in, in processing this state, the connection strength of this one, connection base, is taken as the value of this state. That's the pink arrow, also this one. But there are also other representations 
And this is what the person knows about his own uh, connections. So this, he, he may not know at all anything of them. So that this is the real, but he, this can be a different value, can be a very low value or even an overestimated value. This is just some kind of estimation. Also, re read read from the from, from experiences of of experiencing these states there, and these are the self-referencing states. These are the what is in the title of the paper also. So this says that uh, well, knowing that I have a connection in that sense and seeing that I have this state, uh, then uh, I know that I have this state because of I have this connection. So that's the idea of the self-referring state. It gives some knowledge about you have a mental state, and, but you also know from where it comes from. This is, by the way, not aware yet. So this is not a self-awareness level. That will be the next step. So these are the, the different things. We have the connection ways. They are the real ones. We have a self-model of the connections, and we have the self-referencing states. So then the next level is the level of the, the, the self-awareness. So for each of these self-referencing states, we have self-awareness states. So that these are states that make them, if you if they, these become active, you have awareness. These, step, these dotted uh, arrows, mutually, they, uh, uh, these are, they model uh, winner takes it all competition. So they, they suppress each other so that only one of them can be uh, aware at the same time. So therefore you see in the simulation also that they alternate each other. There is also on this level uh, something else. Uh, there is an, uh, here we had uh, the partner intervention, but now we have the first intervention of the therapist. The therapist tries to make, to let the client become aware of this stigma belief that it comes from some memory, so to make it aware where it comes from, while assuming that he uh, maybe he, he still he already knows it, but maybe he doesn't know it yet, because the, we can also try to influence that. That's another thing. Uh, here we saw the pink arrows downward, downward that do the real uh, execution of the states. Here we have connections that make that the threshold, the excitability thresholds of these become lower, so that there is a better chance that they get some values, these, these uh, self-referencing states, because they don't need to have values. Maybe there is nothing like that in the mind of the person, but this, this should be helping them. So that, that these are the my main uh, things on that level. So. Uh, the self-awareness states, the excitability thresholds that are used at the level below, and the therapist intervention. So this therapist intervention works via a focus, a focus on this stigma, the belief stigma. Okay, then the last level, that's the, the third verification level, or the third order uh, self-model. Here we have a focus again on the awareness of not not again and now it's on the awareness of the stigma belief and the, now there are some more strong strategies by the therapist to get the awareness coming up so this one is uh, making the threshold the excitability threshold lower so that it, the client becomes more open to uh, realize this self-awareness state and therefore, in the competition between with the other states, it gets stronger because the excitability threshold is lower. The, active, the activation level will, in principle, can become higher, but then it has stronger with respect to the other ones and can win the competition. So here also we see some valuations, a, a positive and a negative valuations. And the valuations, uh, they, they mean that uh, given the awareness about how this word stigma comes from, uh, there is a kind of idea, well, that uh, it's not so realistic or it doesn't make really sense. Then it leads to a decrease in the threshold 
uh, sorry, an increase in the threshold for the belief itself is linked downward. So this makes that the this the kind of blocking, uh, maybe partially, but at least uh, it makes it more difficult to let this belief come up because of this evaluation. So that's the, the main model. So that was the uh, uh, therapist intervention tool. We have the evaluations and the excitability threshold for the belief itself. That's the, the model filled in with this specific uh, scenario, this specific case. We have, uh, of course, some simulations. You see here 33 states that go in different directions. Uh, it's a real complex uh, and adaptive system. Um, and for all trends that you can see here, there is a serious explanation that they make sense, but I will just simplify it a little bit and focus step by step on parts of it. These are the, the states for, for the base level. This is where the complaints come up after time 20. This is the intervention of the partner. This is by the, the first by the therapist, and this is the one by the, the second one by the therapist. So this, these are external things. They, they come from the external, uh, they were uh, just scheduled externally. So what happens that this, uh, this uh, red line, you should uh, take into account this red line, in all pictures I repeat that one. That's the, the belief state about the stigma. So you see that it, it is high and uh, it does not react on the intervention by the partner, just so that doesn't help. The first intervention by the therapist, it has a very small effect, but not much. And only the second intervention by the therapist has more effect. So now it is really going down. And uh, the other things the, the are, that are here are the avoidance desire, uh, avoidance preparation, so it also goes down after the second intervention. And the belief that about irrelevant is also here. So let's look at the other level. The first. Sorry, sorry yeah. can can you can you, can you wrap up, please? Uh, sorry. Can you can you can you conclude, please? Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, you can see in the paper how the next levels also look like, and I will go to the uh, last part. So we found in this uh, architecture where we gave these notions uh, a good place uh, in our ID so that you can do simulations, you can do more simulations with them other, other than this, only this case study, this scenario. And future work will we'll try to do more of such therapeutic uh, sessions. And it may finally be some architecture that could, that could give a basis for some virtual training environment for therapists. So that's it. So thank you. Um, there is time for one short question. Um, I don't see anything even from the chat. I have a question. Yes, please. Um, I, I, I don't know if I really understood uh, these uh, three levels of reification. Can you uh, explain why do you need these three levels of, of having... Uh, 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 why, why do you need to have these three levels of, of reification, of having uh, 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 self-awareness and then... Um, I don't remember exactly uh, the, the, why you need the three levels. Can, can you uh, um, clarify that, please? Yeah, for me, the levels come from, from the domain of psychiatry. Do, do you mean that? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, so my, my colleague is, uh, I saw my colleague, maybe my colleague can also react on it. Gerrit, can you react on yes, it? Yes, I can. Yes, um, well, the most important distinction is between self-awareness and self-referentiality. And it is based on the observation, at least in psychiatry, but also in, in in, in psychotherapy and in, in just in ordinary situations that that people may their behavior might mean something for instance an emotion may mean something that the person is not aware of so the, the, the emotion or the behavior or the gesture or 
uh, some facial expression, for instance, may be uh, communicated without awareness by the person that is showing that kind of behavior. Um, whereas it is important to understand its meaning uh, in the larger um, uh, context. So um, many behaviors of people, non-verbal behaviors, are very relevant to understand what's going on. So uh, what we mean with the notion of self-referentiality is that these behaviors do show or signify or mean something about a person even if this person is not aware of what's going on, or what he's showing. And then self-awareness is that there is an elementary awareness of what's going on. And with self-interpretation, the person is able to interpret the behavior or uh, gesture uh, from a wider, from a, um, from a, from a larger uh, perspective, from a larger context. So that's the reason that you need to have uh, these three levels of, 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 of uh, referentiality, that you need to have uh, a reference, then you need to have a reference of the reference, and then the reference to the reference to the reference. So, so uh, that, 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 that was the thing that confused me, that you need to have three, three different levels of referentiality. Yeah. So it's, basic, it's based on, on my observation that psychology doesn't have a language for at least the self-referentiality of emotions, interactions, uh, gestures, and so on. Uh, and that uh, there's just a simple distinction between unconscious behaviors and conscious behaviors, whereas uh, then unconscious behaviors are usually attributed to some brain process, and whereas conscious pro processes are seen as something that is guided by some reflection. But then you miss the intermediate area of meaningful behaviors that really indicate something about a person without that state coming to the awareness of that person. M much of our behaviors, so, so everyone knows this from his own experience, that sometimes other people can read better what's going on with you than you yourself are. So that's basically the reason to make the distinction between so uh, unconscious behavior, uh, self-referential behavior, and behavior of which you are aware. And awareness can then be uh, expand and grow out into something that um, fits into a larger picture of the kind of person you are. So it's a quite natural distinction, I think. But the most important one is the, the, the initial one between just behavior and, and behavior with some self-referential meaning, because that term is very rarely used in the psychological literature.